So we've learned that the sun is very far away, absolutely colossal, uh, extremely heavy, but actually quite low density, not only a little bit, bit more than water. What's next? What else are we going to figure out? Well, I mean, th that's kind of the point, right? If, if it is low density, we, we clearly want to know what it's made up of. We can't just go and dig stuff out of the sun, right? You know, we can dig down on the earth, we can look at, is that iron? Is that dirt? Is that water? We can't really do that on the sun. We need a different technique than what we have used here in the past, don't we? I mean, if NASA are currently sending probes that will intercept some of the outer layer of the sun and work out what is the case, but that's not historically true. That's right. And it's certainly not true for any other star. No. We need some way to be able to work out what something's made of when we can't touch it, when we can't take a sample and put it in our lab and put it through a mass spectrometer or something like something this. Something that we can use a telescope with. And so we've called this spectroscopy, right, Paul? Yes, and uh, spectroscopy is a huge part of astronomy. Yeah. Uh, Brad's nodding here. <laughs> well, uh, we, we see your beautiful vest, Paul, but that's not actually what we do, right? You know, very few of these things that we take are these nice, pretty pictures in space. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the public media about astronomy, it's all about pretty pictures of things. But in, I mean, I'm very familiar with the statistics of telescope use because I'm in charge of allocating our local telescopes. Thank and, you for the time lately. <laughs> and, you know, 90% of them is not for taking pretty pictures but for getting spectra. So what is a spectrum? Well, I mean, astronomy, if you like, is the ultimate non-contact sport, <laughs> with the exception of a few things like Mars and the Moon, you can look, but you can't touch. Yes. And so you have to be really good at looking, and that means you have to really understand light in all its glory. You have to glory. understand what you're actually looking at. Yes. Now, light is made of electromagnetic waves, yep. photons, if you like, these little particles of light coming at us, each of which has a wave-like nature. Yep. Now, there's a whole field about, is it a wave or is it a particle? We're not going to go into that here. Um, but you can think of it as particles which have a wavelength. Yep. And some are short wavelength and some, some are long enormous. wavelength and some are enormous wavelengths. So they have different wavelengths, so then they move through space differently. They all go at the same speed. Yep. Um, it's just like short ones and long ones, like small balls and big balls, if you like. So how do we see these different short and long? Well, let's talk a bit about what the different wavelengths actually look like. Okay. So. If you have a wavelength of a meter for your light, yep. that's what we call radio waves. So the longer wavelengths go towards the radio waves. Yes, so you won't see them with your eye, you'll pick yep. them up with your transistor radio. And so is this partially why these radio telescopes are so ginormous? Yes, it is. I mean, you uh, try to pick up things with wavelengths of meters, you can need a big telescope to do it. A little telescope won't really pick it up, will it? To some extent, I mean, your, your phone can pick up That's true. communication, so you can do it. But roughly speaking, if you've got wavelengths of meters or many centimeters, you're talking radio waves rather than visible light. When you're down at the wavelength of a few centimeters, that's what you're getting in your microwave oven. So the microwave oven is using electromagnetic waves? Yes, so it's an electromagnetic wave just like light, just like radio waves, only a bit shorter. And, but, and we still can't see it with our eyes. No, we can't see it, but it'll heat up your baked potato very nicely. Thank you very much. Oh, I'll take Don't it. try putting your eye inside a <laughs> microwave oven. Yes. That is not what we're proposing here. Um, when you get shorter still, you're into what we typically call the infrared, which is what your TV remote control will work, or night vision goggles or things like this. So, so in night vision, you're essentially putting on a special pair of eyes to see this different slightly longer wavelengths. So you've got cameras that can see in the infrared wavelengths. In fact, some animals can see at infrared wavelengths. That's right. So their eye essentially is tuned to these longer wavelengths as opposed to the shorter wavelengths next to us where the visible light is. Yep. Then you get a little tiny region in the middle with a wavelength of about half a micrometer. So we're not talking meters long, we're talking half a micrometer, then far, far, far smaller than the thickness of a hair. And that's the wavelength of what I'm seeing you with, you're seeing me with, and what yeah. you, dear viewers, are watching this with. But then you can go shorter still, and you can get into ultraviolet. So which, ultraviolet light, like we get burnt in the summer here. Yes, yeah, so maybe a tenth of a, uh, a micrometer or even smaller than that will give you sunburn. And you go smaller still, you're getting down to uh, nanometers, and then you're talking about x-rays for medical or, and then all the way down to gamma rays with even shorter wavelengths. So, is, so we see that the wavelength corresponds to the type of light, but how... How does this relate to what creates or what is in that wavelength, let's say? We'll, we'll talk a bit about that later. I mean, we'll be bombarded on Earth by 
light at all these wavelengths and astronomers like to use all of them. Different things will emit different ones, like the sun mostly emits visible light, yep. radio galaxies mostly emit radio waves, black holes can emit gamma rays and x-rays and so but on. Are we getting, we're not really getting gamma rays here on Earth? No, what you'll see here is which ones actually get through the Earth's atmosphere and by and large most of this radiation doesn't get through the atmosphere. The ultraviolet, the x-rays, gamma rays, they generally don't get through the atmosphere. You can't view them from the Earth's surface. So we can obviously detect radio waves on So there's Earth. basically two big windows. There's radio, and that gets through the Earth's atmosphere, which is why radio telescopes work. Um, and there's visible light, and there's a few different wavelengths in the infrared where you can see through the atmosphere. But not a lot. But everything else, you're kind of stuffed. You have to go into space. This is always what amuses me about Superman's X-ray vision. <laughs> he wouldn't see anything. It's, first of all, it's black, because <laughs> so, uh, the sunlight doesn't light anything up, so you'd have to have an X-ray torch. And it won't get very far through the Earth's atmosphere. So, so the Earth's atmosphere is blocking most of the light that we see in space, so we send telescopes up into there. But we can then see certain parts of radio and optical, but we don't just see all of visible light as one color, do we? No. So. Now if we zoom in on that, it's a very small part, so this very tiny range. See, most frequencies a human eye can't see. A human eye is really, as an astronomer, pretty pathetic. It's very we're not very good cameras. We're very good at looking at this incredibly tiny range of frequencies, but all the other frequencies we can't see. But let's zoom in on those very small range of frequencies. And this is roughly the frequency in nanometers okay. that the human eye can see. So by and large, we start being able to see a little bit, maybe a bit beyond 400 nanometers, and down there we'd see it as blue. Yep. Um, and our peak sensitivity is about 550 nanometers. Getting towards the greeny colors. Yellowy, greeny sort of color. Yep. Um, and then as you go down into the, what we see as red, which is like between 600 and 700 nanometers. So then the ultraviolet would be kind of bluer that way, and yep. the infrared would be redder this way. But we can't see any of those. Right. Sunburn us give us cataracts, but we don't see the ultraviolet, and the infrared might warm us up, but again, it's not going to be able to see it with our eyes. Okay. And it's not a coincidence that this is the range the human eye evolved to see. It's because this is actually the wavelength which the sun puts out most radiation. It'd be very stupid for us to evolve our eyes that, say, could see at 10 microns if the atmosphere was opaque and the sun didn't emit there because we'd be blundering around in the dark and the tigers would eat us. So, so essentially our bodies and humans have adapted and lots of life have adapted to see these colors because that is what the majority of light is it's what there the sun's to be emitting seen. and what gets through the atmosphere. That's right. Um, so in the next uh, video, we'll talk about how you actually split these colors up. And oh, I thought we were looking them. in the infrared here. <laughs>